Hello, this is from Manuia. I'm Nua Lee, it's Rola Faile. And I'm Julia Arnott Nini. And this is Tech Voyages, a series that explores the technology and digital realm as Pacifica Trailblazers. Join us each week as we recap the latest tech news and look into the wins, challenges, and impact of technology in our Pacifica communities. Welcome back, everyone. Yarns. <laughs> another episode, another yarns. Another yarns. So Almost to the end, sis. I know. After this episode, one more. One more. Oh, my gosh. How has your week been so far, sister? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> As you know, I went over to Sydney for South by Southwest. Yes. So it was the first time that the South by Southwest, I guess, brand, I guess, or conference mm-hmm. brand had left Austin, Texas. True. Made its way over to Sydney. I know. It was kind of crazy that it was the first time. And there was literally 700 speakers. 700. How long is the conference for? So it's for like, it's kind of like a nine day or eight day, nine day. So mm. it's a long time. Multiple places, multiple venues, oh. Chance the Rapper, like some pretty big yarn. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it was insane. And I... I mean, you know me, I'm a bit of a conference fiend now. Oh, like, no. mm-hmm. I'm all about growing the mind. It's your cup of tea. It, <laughs> actually, it is. I come back so <laughs> energized, so excited by the world. I think also just um, getting outside of New Zealand's bubble. Yeah. Getting and hearing like global speakers, meeting global thinkers that are kind of That's operating cool. outside of, you know, I think the smallness of Aotearoa is to mm. its benefit in a lot of ways. Yeah. And then and on the flip side of it, you can often end up feeling like, you know, there's a there's a ceiling and yep. and it's hard to exist as someone who wants to, you know, dream big or do things. You, you wanna pop out of it, Asus. <laughs> Don't get me started. Don't oh, get me started. We just we just started this episode. <laughs> no, right? Okay. We're just <laughs> easing our way in. So now nah, South by Southwest is amazing. So good. Good for the soul, good for the spirit, good for the mind. So nice. we love that. We loved it too. Oh my gosh. How's your week, sis? Oh, um, you know, I joined BFT. Um, <laughs> health as well. Um, and I'm doing my eight week challenge. Oh, I'm so nervous. Eh? Oh. And I was good. I did the you know, when you go in and you do your full body scan. Can you do this again? You do the full body scan. scan. And I was like, mm. beep, beep. <laughs> 360 scan <laughs> Hey, at least, at least I let, let you on to scan though Yeah, no, uh, exactly And you know what was cool Was like, man, I got to see stuff like How much like lean weight you have Like your Ooh. muscles Ooh. And like the circumference of your body And everything Ooh. But man, that meal plan mm-hmm. Ooh, no Cottage cheese with honey on rice cakes <clears throat> Where's the meat? Oh. <laughs> What's the pro- oh, that's the protein? Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. I'm on my journey, but support me, fam. Um, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. you. We've actually both got a BFT, so yes. if BFT wants to sponsor her. Yes, please. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if you want, yeah, I want a burpee for a whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, I can't even do a burpee. But what I can do is that, that's right, everyone. It's here on the beat. It's here on the beat. It's here on the beat. Where my music? It's here on the beat. It's here on the beat. beat, beat, beat. All right, news report number one. Uh, Stability AI launches new text-to-music AI sound generator called Stable Audio. So Stable Audio, or actually Stability AI, for those that don't know, is, you know, those real cool if you, like, go on the text prompt and you write, um, let's say, um, someone, person in the next 3,000 years, they get to generate what they would look like. So it's like oh, AI-generated yeah. images, yeah. which looks pretty cool because yeah. I'm like, wow, some of them are like in like fancy suits. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. it's just like, so the, so Stability AI are the ones that um, are one of the many players into AI-generated images. But then now they're moving towards uh, AI-generated audio. So the same thing with the images where there's a text prompt and then in the text prompt you can say, Island, reggae, hip hop, and rap, and then it generates it in like a minute, a forty-five second, like um, kind of like. See, I'm not a musician or something. <laughs> just saying, just to let everyone know. But I it, thought you're a DJ though. Oh well, I like DJ noise, <laughs> but DJ noise could benefit from this too because oh. they generate um that text that you did yeah. to create like a what do you call it? It's like a, a sample. Yes, that's the word. Okay. a sample of a song for them to build their music. Wow, and so. You wouldn't believe it. I actually yes. hopped on, signed oh, up. Oh, DJ, DJ. Yes, okay. Wanda, you know, because all about trial and error. Yeah, love this. And then I hopped on and I typed in 
I wrote Samoan. And then um, it generated something that didn't sound Samoan. Because <laughs> um, I don't know what would sound, you know, Samoan. But yeah. it was pretty cool because I got the free version, which was yeah. 45 seconds. But just like how fast you can do a sample. Wow. I, I was reading into it because I'm not a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta check that, didn't I? Um, <sighs> that takes ages for people to do samples. Oh, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. Because you've got to probably, like, I guess with music, there's so many different layers to yep. create the output, right? I do. And so this this speeds up that whole creative component as yeah. well as adding all the different layers and making it all happen. And because, like, what I learned from looking into this one was, um, man, there's, like, a massive demand for people to make more singles. Oh. And, like... Because, like, I remember when we were talking about it, the only album I ever heard really religiously was the Lemonade album from Beyonce. <laughs> you could say it's to, you know, explain the five seasons of grief. But um, then oh, it's a heartbreak. 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 <laughs> Get us this. But, like, do you see how I don't even have enough attention to look at, like, one one yeah. song, but... You know, the way she did it was a whole album. So yeah, yeah. this could contribute with the massive demand. Do you know what I was just thinking about is my mum made me do piano lessons. Oh, I love I it. F- I like resented it so much. And like, there's like grade one, grade two, you have to do testing, you have to do all these yeah. lessons. I mean, look, privilege to have access to learn a piano, recognise that, will definitely acknowledge that. And I'm just thinking... Could stable audio <laughs> yes. help me, like, I don't know, create outputs? I I guess, I don't know. I'm, again, I'm jumping ahead of I'm mm. trying to learn a piece of, uh, um, I'm trying to learn a, a piece of music and help me create that. But is this going to, like, hack your ability to, you know, not only create True. music but learn music? But, like, I don't know. Anyway, I probably am thinking very, very small scale and there'll be people that mm. listen to this that have way bigger ideas. But all I think about was the trauma of doing all of those piano lessons and how I could. Did you get the pink book too? The, the level one pink yes, book? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, man. I used to just kick and scream about doing that oh, sort of see, stuff. If we and, had... the, and the, and the tick, tock. Oh. What was that thing? I don't anyway. know. I've re- <laughs> used the drum because, you know, because what do you call that? Because I used to see it on the Lizzie yeah, McGuire yeah, movie. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I just, oh. If only we had this back in the day, eh? If only, if only. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So that is our news topic number one. News topic number two is UK music industry body wants to adopt these five principles for regulating AI. So over in the UK, our brothers and sisters there have um, come together to create a council, which are full of um, existing artists, composers, managers, and so forth, who um, really want to, because they saw the re- the rise of AI, mm. there's a lot of just um, concern with everything, especially yep. protecting our brothers and sisters in that industry. Yep. So they created and introduced these five fundamentals thing, um, that they really wish could be <laughs> could be embraced, um, not only in the UK, but all around the world. Oh, yeah, cool. So the five um, fundamentals, um, I'm just going to get pretty high level, but mm. um, number one is consent music must be... Um, uh, what's it called? Is it acquired? Acquired, mm-hmm. yeah. By individual music makers? Acquired. Acquired. <laughs> I got you. AI spelling B, where you <laughs> at? <laughs> um, uh, number two is all publicity and personal rights of that music person yeah. um, must be respected. Number three, uh, music mes- uh, music makers must fairly share the financial rewards. Ooh. Hard all day. Yeah. Yep. Like, they deserve it because it's their music. Uh, number four, all those AI companies must proactively consult the music makers. Because even though they use their, even though they're making their own beats, mm. it's still with their own voice. Wow. And then number five is that all AI generated work must be clearly labeled. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So those are the, the five magic um, fundamentals for the music industry. Well, it's been interesting because as you talked about, that demand for the singles and the yep. changing... I guess the um, appreciation for the art, right? Yeah. Oh, no. I think we talked about that. Like you've got the Beyonce's and Taylor Swift's that are yeah. literally shifting like economic um, um, states of countries yep. and communities because of how they of their touring schedule and like the, the impact that those that they are both having and the longevity of their brands mm. versus music outputs, single outputs on TikTok and just like getting that. What is it? I mean, I don't look. I'm not a TikTok uh, influencer, <laughs> but but to get a moment of which your song becomes the next dance competition yeah. or the next like dance trend, and mm-hmm. that is being a way to build your brand. But to be living off that cycle, that short cycle, yeah. 
So, I mean, it's just a really different way to view the artistry. And I guess these principles kind of speak to that, the difference yeah. in people that will really actually see these um, the AI tools not as a threat, but actually mm. as a way to be re- keep up with the relevance cycle yep. and the endless pursuit of relevance. I do. And then you've got those... I don't want to call them like just like different types of seeing that long term brand taste making mm-hmm. trend setting yeah. trailblazing that are like holding true to the art form even mm-hmm. like Adele right the example of Adele yeah. she's oh she's amazing don't make me cry so oh my gosh but an example of like kind of why those five fundamentals are important was um there's a news article that happened about uh, the Grammys mm. and um it was about Drake and the Weeknd so this AI company um created this deep fake AI voice which used The Weeknd and Drake and then they and then they managed to at least get into like the the first half of the Grammys like decision list to see if they could win a Grammy but then after the Grammys had a look at the whole situation especially with the plea of the industry yes they took them out but it's just the fact that they even needed it in the first place wow and it's just like man like and it wasn't consulted through The Weeknd and Drake so that was an interesting find when the it was the article from Music Tech. Wow. Which highlights really what happened in that. But like, see, like, where's the respect for the um, the artists as they like it's just they took data from the old songs yeah. and just used it. Probably it would be like a cover for another song, but man, that's yeah. Would you feel safe if you're a music uh, muso in, oh, I in this mean, new age? I think it again goes back to how you view what's your definition of music? Yeah. Like, That's what's your true. definition of a sound? Yeah. Does it have to be human generated? Mm. Does it have to be what level of human influence creates yeah. a sound or creates music? And I and I can see also for some that, you know, the democratization of technology, the accessibility mm. of all of these different ways that the industry's moved means that the power shift has mm. gone away from labels holding like all oh, of no. the power of record companies, like that whole space to now... I guess for some, more power in their hands. For yeah. others, feeling like their all of their um, artistry is being stolen and used in ways mm-hmm. that they haven't consented to. I don't know. It's um, I mean, it's a massive moral kind of roller coaster. And I think the thing that seems the biggest threat out of all of this is that mm. there's no one solution. There's no one collective voice. Yeah. That there's a lot of different voices. Yeah. And I suppose it's going to be a test of our generation or of of our times yeah. as to who is the final decision maker on these things? And how do we find consensus with AI across so many different industries? Oh, well, if you're thinking the same as us, well, think even more because we're going to talk more in our Talanoa. But for now, that is Itzy on the beat. Itzy on the beat. Itzy on the beat. So on this Talanoa today, we're going to be talking, Mm -hmm. like Itzy mentioned, all about music and technology. And we're going to give some local examples because I don't know if everyone knows this, but New Zealand actually has a long, like actually quite a big relationship with music, obviously music industry, but also with Mm. music technology. Oh, true. Yeah. Funnily enough, we've taken all of our like DIY sort of innovative mindsets, culture, number eight wire, and we've applied it really well into the music space and on Mm. a global level. That's cool. I know. It's really cool. So um, kind of framing what is music technology. So Hmm. as we kind of talked about earlier, the democratization of technology, which means accessibility um, has increased. So you are able to access things like software devices, hardware platforms at a relatively, and it's all very relative and subjective, Hmm. more inexpensively for most people. And so what's happening now is that Music uh, and music technologists are also creating new tools for music mm. creation. So different, like 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 the tools we just talked about, right? Yeah. Different ways to create music. And so we've got a bunch of different examples here in Aotearoa, and some of them include Serato, Red Witch Analog, Melodics, Dogmatic, which I hope I pronounce oh, that properly. That's a nice, that's a nice name. <laughs> Dogmatic, mm. Synth, Synthstrom Audio, the Cargo Cult cool. plugins, the Cargo Cult plug. Man, that's a that's a that's a it's, it's a, tongue it's a tongue twister. twister. Yeah. Speaker dot motion. Oh, this one's gonna get me. Pyxis minor and mm-hmm. sound magic spectral. I mean, look, that's like at least ten things I just said. Yeah, I don't know. And that's like tech companies, music tech companies built and born out oh. of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Man, and it's like we don't talk that much about it. We eh? don't talk that much yeah. about it. Which is quite interesting because I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, like ten versus some of you know the music and agro tech, which are in the hundreds. Yeah, I don't. But um. What I will find really interesting is that 
it's it's like a niche that yeah. um, we probably don't bring enough fame to in the same way that yeah. we actually think about music. Because music is like pop culture. It's very mm-hmm. common. You know, we've got our, our lords, our scribes, like we've got... Um, you know, our Josh 685, like we've got our whole yeah. kind of we've had global examples of people kind of cutting through. But what we haven't necessarily talked about is the kind of... The back stuff. Yeah, like, the back stuff or the technology build stuff. Yeah. So we're going to be giving a couple of examples of local innovation. Mm-hmm. Now, the first one is Melodics. And shout out to Melodics because a couple of these examples have actually partnered with Fiberfale before. Yep. And uh, Sam Gribben, the amazing CEO, mm-hmm. has been mm-hmm. such a supporter of Fiberfale. He's come and talked at our Tautai Tech Leadership Camp. Yep. He has also hosted one of our Vaka experiences where we mm-hmm. brought in a whole raft of Māori and Pacific um, men, actually, who uh, were learning how to shift from passion to profession in the music industry. And we oh. got to expose them to the type of tech companies that are also potential pathways. That's cool. Yeah. Really cool. So it was a really amazing partnership with an organiz- a community organization mm. um, out south as well. So back to Melodics. So yeah. Melodics is a desktop app that helps you learn how to play an instrument with confidence. So essentially what it does is, you know how we talked about like Duolingo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And learning languages. Melodics is essentially a way to learn music instruments. Any. Yeah, well, okay, within, so what they do is they partner with the software aspect and the hardware aspect. So they have their keyboard, they have their finger drum, so Mm -hmm. so, so learning, I think it's like beat making and stuff, and 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 drumming as well. So there's like um, three main components, so Mm -hmm. the keyboard, finger drumming, and then also like, yeah, obviously just drumming as well, that allows you to play with the hardware, so like, okay, here I am. There we go. There we go. And it's and it's kind of like um oh my god, it's not Singstar. Maybe it was Singstar. You know when oh, it you know oh like it's like the Wii. It's oh, is oh, it the Wii and oh, and it's like the, 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 oh, oh Guitar Hero, Guitar yes, Hero. Guitar. There we go. Oh my gosh, that took me so long. <laughs> With the Wii. But was Singstar like that too though? I don't know. I never owned it. <laughs> I feel like I sort of remember things like, and it was like the, the kind of like levels, or maybe that was just karaoke. Oh, but no, cool. yeah. oh, I'm a fail. Anyway, Melodics is amazing in the sense that they're trying to encourage the habit or the habit building of music. Oh, smart. Yeah. So it's trying to meet the needs. I mean, like a lot of, I think their customer base isn't necessarily in New Zealand, but yeah. during COVID-19, you know, that that was was a prime time for where people were spending more time at home wanting to mm. do stuff with like hobbies and tools and well not tools but but kind of building craftsmanship i yep. guess or skills and so melodic really mm. meets that need and is a great way of merging like learning entertainment gamification yeah. kind of all of those elements through a technology solution mm. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I want to learn how to play guitar. I know, right? Or keyboard. Okay. I mean, uh, here we go. Back to. I never have to go to my piano lessons again. I know. I that's, could just do them at home. That's so cool, and I like how they use the habits. Yes, because it's that's really what it is. It's just repetition. Totally, and so it has like a tracker on your thing, and it's like, what's your weekly goal, your daily goal, Whoa. like how much, like it's all that sort of st- like that coaching. I like guess an eight week challenge to. Eight <laughs> week challenge. <laughs> it's an eight week challenge. <laughs> exactly to learn how to play. An instrument. Exactly. I love it. So <laughs> Melodix is a really cool organization doing great things. That's cool. Also incredible values that um are guiding it as well, which I, I think know. is is just I mean that's just a it's not even an additional bonus. It's like a beautiful foundation in which they're moving yeah. from. Right. So shout out to you, Melodix. Oh my lord. Yes. <laughs> and the next one is Serato. So do you miss um DJ? Yes. DJ Noise. DJ Noise. Do you know much about DJ software? No, but you know when <laughs> you know when so when DJ Noise came to Australia uh, to, yeah. to K Road and I went I yeah. was so hyper excited. Um, I never really noticed that because back in the day, you know, like it's always just the turntables. Yeah, yeah. But like they always have the laptop. But yes. then I don't really know what's happening with the whole flow. But I did see a sticker because you know they got really nice swag. I did see the Serato sticker on the DJ kits, oh. and then I was sitting there and oh, that looks familiar. But nah, I really don't. But I do know. Now yeah. that they do DJ software, but man, that must be technical. As well, so the cool thing, so it um, we came out of again came out of New Zealand, yeah, um, and it was it was an incredible, I guess, evolution to what was happening in the music space and in the mm-hmm. software, or oh, not software, sorry, in the music space and the DJ space at the time, yeah. And so um, it was first product was in 1999, and it was mm. gr- it was all about trying to make um, the best possible experience for playing 
creating, mm. sharing music wherever you are. That was kind of, I guess, how could it become easier? And so yep. it is premier audio software for music lovers all over the world. <laughs> Since um, launching their first product, they've had grown into a community of millions of DJs, producers, engineers, and musicians oh. across 190 countries. So that's like... That's a huge amount of reach, this. Yeah, there's, like, sometimes people forget there's more other, like, I don't even know there were sound engineers. So this is the... Yeah. All of the things. That's crazy. All of the things. And, and so... Pool. It's, I guess it's for those hobbyists, maybe, or music lovers from yep. doing stuff in their bed, bedroom studios all the way mm. through to festival stages, which I think is incredible. That's me. So some of their products are Serato DJ Pro, which is mm-hmm. um, the DJ software that allows you, and, like, look, this is non-expert talking about this Talk but it's. it has um it lets you customize your performance such as fx sync stems cue points sample mm. player record de- midi key analysis slicer beat jump and i would love if i knew yeah, what, what that really what meant that, yeah. because i don't create music but what it sounds like to me is yeah. that it's got a whole bunch of incredible features that allows mm-hmm. you to kind of, I guess, elevate the sounds and the music that you're creating. That's cool. And, and you know, I was looking at what the costs are for some of these. And for a subscription, for a, you know, a monthly subscription, it's around $10 USD a month to access some of the software, which, I mean, that's it's not, not bad. not that bad, especially for, like, an up-and-coming name. Hard out to get some of the best um, DJ software that's available out to you. And it, and it combines with different hardware, too, because, mm. again, there's a... You know, because I'm an expert, as I've yes. done all my desk research, <laughs> the hardware and the software component, and 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 bringing those together. So they've got DJ Pro, they've mm-hmm. got DJ Lite, which is a I guess a lesser version, but has some of the essential features. Mm-hmm. They've got Serato Studio, which is a way to um, develop beats and has beat production elements to it. Oh, everything I know, I know. Serato Sample, yeah. which is a powerful intuitive sampler plugin for producers. So. I mean, they're just, I just think that's incredible that it comes out of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Mm. It's gone across 190 cultures. They talk about the DJ Jazzy Jeff. They've had all sorts of like major oh, people. Big names, eh? Big names. Mm. And also they they've also done a Vucker experience with us. They've also supported trying to see more Pacifica in technology. We've had um, one of their incredible OGs. Yes, uh, yes. Has been part of Tech Voyages. <laughs> and they've actually got quite a lot of Pacific representation at Serato too. You yeah, know, they do, eh? Because I first met one of the um, one of our sisters at a movie premiere when I was at uni, and she's been there ever since. So, nah, they're yeah going strong. <laughs> and I think I guess um, and and some of my takeaways out of this. So we moved yeah. to takeaway time. Yes, <laughs> here is your order. <laughs> here is your order. Um, a takeaway for me is thinking about what are some industries where we are naturally um, accustomed to or naturally find our way into, which is music, right? Mm. As a community, as a culture, music is a core part of what we do and who we are. Yep. But thinking about the ways in which we might also be creators of the tools that we use to create music. Yeah. So Serato and Melodics for me feel like incredible examples of how there's a pre-existing industry where yep. mu- music has been around for a really long time. And the kind of examples and mm-hmm. innovations around how do you create it, how do you use it, and how do you learn it yep. are things I never would have thought of. Mm. So taking existing places in which we feel relevant to, we feel comfortable in, yep. and thinking about how we could do them differently. Yeah. Takeaway number one. Takeaway number one, let's go. Uh, number two for me is just try it out, eh? Hey? <laughs> like a lot of these um, companies, these music companies, they have free trials. Yeah, I love it. Like I think um, a lot of, I don't know, maybe it's just the, it's just sometimes you just don't want to try it or you hear stories about how a, how it has an AI feature and you're, you're scared to use it. You won't know until you just try it. Mm. So I think um, part of your research or looking into into tech is also being able to touch and even break it. If you manage to break the free trial, oh, that itself shows like you're smart for breaking the trial. <laughs> um, good on you. Break and then get the full premium afterwards. But um, but it's just like if you don't touch it and feel it, you won't actually fully understand if it's the best fit for you. So that's my uh, takeaway number two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that's us here at Tech Voyages for episode 11. We only have one to go. One more. One to go. So we hope our our followers of, I'm going to say 11 people. Yeah, we're going to, no, let's say 20. 20. 
<laughs> might be more. <laughs> might be more. And actually, thank you to some of our followers that have come out yeah. to our fiber funnels, that oh, have no. DM'd us, that have asked us to be part of speaking opportunities. We love it and we really appreciate it. And we love to know you're listening. Yeah, hard doubt. And if you want to continue to listen or even follow us after, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn and let us know what you want to hear. Or even if you come to our events, talk to us more about it. But for until then, we can't wait to see you for our last episode. Until then, to Fast Life 4, we'll see you then. You have been listening to Tech Voyages, brought to you by Fiber Folly. It was hosted by me, Julia Arnott Nini. And me, Nuali'i Etevra Lafaeli. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you're following Tech Voyages on your favourite podcast player so you get new episodes as soon as they land. Join the Talanoa and let us know your thoughts using hashtag Tech Voyages on all socials. And if you want to know more about pathways for Pacifica people in tech, visit fiberfale.com. <laughs>